Welcome to Americana Archives. Today's head-on is Big Squaw Auction. Annual Sale of Brides by the Comanche Indians. The subhead-on is Amy Parker, daughter of noted chief, sold the wild horse for 63 ponies. Other maidens also brought good prices. It says, A correspondent of the Chicago Inner Ocean writes that the annual distribution of Comanche Indian brides has just occurred at the Saddle Mound Mission in southern Oklahoma. Fifty of the prettiest women of the tribe were sold at public auction as the wives of tribesmen who bid them in. This barbaric custom was to have been discontinued by the Comanches last year, but it went on more boldly than ever this season, being conducted under the very eyes of the white settlers. The Festival of the Comanche, Pony Smoke, as this ceremony is called, is of more than passing interest. Seldom are so many young squaws auctioned off, as was done this year. But the surplus was great, and needed thinning out, according to the head men of the tribe. Their parents, refusing to keep them any longer, the girls naturally needed homes somewhere, and it was deemed best by the medicine men to auction them off as wives, the highest bidders to take their choice. Big Bo, a monstrous, fat, and ugly Indian, acted as the auctioneer. He was assisted by a number of medicine men, who performed the marriage ceremonies after the sales had been made. Five hundred Indians gathered at the Saddle Mound Mission. This mission is located 30 miles directly south of Mountain View and on the range of the Wichita Mounds. The girls who were sold had been confined in a lodge for three weeks prior to this meeting and were well fed and extremely well groomed. They were all clad in gay colors and their hair arranged in perfect Indian fashion. It was plain to see that their parents had prepared them to bring fancy prices. The girls were in various moods, some hysterical, others calm, and not a few delighted with the experience. Among others was a daughter of the famous Quanah Parker, the noted Comanche Indian chief. This daughter, whose name is Amy, had displeased them by attempting to run away and marry a white man, and a cowboy at that. So Parker decided that the best thing would be to sell her at auction. This is the first time that Parker, who was counted by the white neighbors a highly cultivated Indian, has ever allowed any of his relatives to be sacrificed at the auction block. But the wrath of an Indian parent knows no bounds. Sad and silent, Amy Parker was led to the block for sale. The first bid was 11 ponies. Jack Wildhorse, a well-known scout of the tribe, was the bidder. He was immediately raised by a rival, likewise a scout. This latter claimant bid 15. Others then cut in, and Miss Parker was run up to 50 ponies. Her face grew pale when she saw that Wildhorse was determined to get her, as he is known as the most desperate savage on the reservation when drunk and angered. It is said that he has killed three wives when drunk. Wild Horse, however, won the young squaw for 63 ponies. The stock was turned over to Parker, and a medicine man married Wild Horse and the squaw. According to the Comanche rites, the couple then went to El Reno, where a regular marriage license was issued to them and the ceremony repeated by a pale-faced minister. Although the marriage took place only three days ago, a dispatch from Lawden says that she attempted to commit suicide after failing in an attempt to kill her new husband. Other young women objected quite as strongly as Miss Parker did to being auctioned off, but it did them no good whatever. Big Bo went ahead with the sale until every one of them was sold. The lowest bid made for any of them was 20 ponies. This was the price paid for a half-breed woman who had been married to a white man but the latter having died, she reverted back to her parents again. In all, over 1,500 ponies changed hands in the free days of the big bridal auction. Not for many years have the squaws commanded such spirited bidding and big prices as in this latest event of its kind among the Comanches. This story came from the great state of Ohio, being reported in the Defiance Express on March 5, 1902. 
Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.